Hey everyone, Adam here. So this week I want to talk about things that no longer serving us a purpose, both emotionally and physically, and what we can do about them. So I know inherently this sounds easy, but for whatever reason, I think people generally have a little bit of an issue uh, with this topic, either being honest with themselves of what is actually serving them a purpose, um, and then if they do identify it, actually making the the changes, you know, I, for whatever reason, I feel that people are just, they're very much against change. Even though people say they're not against change, they really are. But that's a different topic. Anyway, uh, what I would like to do is I'll give an example in my life of something that uh, it's an emotional thing um, that I've decided to simplify. And then um, it's a little bit nerdy, a little bit geeky. Um, stay with me. Um, and then uh, I'll give more of a, hopefully, a, a real worldwide uh, example of this and, and, and tie it all in. So back in 2003, here's my personal story. Back in 2003, uh, I was given a live Linux CD. And uh, essentially what it allowed me to do was play around with this new operating system without ever touching my hard drive. In essence, once I got this and started playing around with it, I knew I wanted to do this as a hobby. I wanted to play around with this operating system as a hobby. So between 2003, 2011, I kept uh, installing, uninstalling Linux uh, throughout my career and playing around with it as I got time and then I didn't have time. I kept playing around with this operating system. Well, in 2011, I decided to run this operating system full time. The challenge was I still needed Windows operating system. That's probably what everyone is more familiar with, the Windows operating system. So I still, I still needed that in my life for uh, gaming, video editing, um, and uh, that was about it. But at that time, I wasn't doing as much of that stuff. So I was probably in Linux 90% of my time, and then 10% of the time was in Windows when I actually needed it. Um, so it was manageable. Um, and I had time to learn Linux at that time, and, and that, was, uh, 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 that was immensely fun for me. I wanted to learn about computers. I thought it was a superior operating system. I still feel it's a much, much more superior operating system. Um, and I really wanted it to be uh, a part of my life. Uh, I like the culture of it, a whole bunch of positive things with it. Well, recently, uh, I'm doing more video editing. Uh, I'm still gaming with my friends, um, and on top of that, I also need Windows for a couple of work type applications uh, for, for my job, basically. So now I'm finding I'm in Windows 40 or 50% of the time, and then the other uh, remaining time, 50%, uh, let's say, um, I could be in the Linux operating system. Um, so I'm switching back between the operating systems a lot more frequently. Plus, I'm maintaining all of my data in both operating systems. So. At this point, it's become more of a hassle to be setting up this dual boot system um, than it was worth uh, in 2011. So part of me is disappointed. Again, I really like Linux. I think it's a more superior operating system. But the problem is, is I need the software on Windows. So Linux is no longer serving the purpose for me that it once was. Um, Windows 10, uh, again, a little bit nerdy, um, is good enough. They, they introduce virtual desktops and my workflow, although slower in Windows compared to Linux, is, it's on par, it's manageable. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is Windows 10 is good enough for me and my workflow. So two, well, I've got a couple of options, right? I can just dump Linux altogether, right? Just bam, out of my life altogether. I don't exactly want to do that, um, but I really, really want to simplify things. So again, you know, most people will just be like, well, that sounds like a lot of work. I got to switch operating systems. I got to move all my data around. Eh, you know, let's not do that. What I've decided to do is on my laptop that I just purchased, Windows 10 only, on my desktop, Windows 10 only, uh, I'm going to set up some software to synchronize all my data between them. And that's it. Those are the only two operating systems uh, that I will be supporting and running full time in my life. Completely simplified. Now, I still want Linux a part of my life. So how am I gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna set that up through uh, a virtual machine. So it's a little bit geeky, but essentially I can run Linux without having to reinstall or reboot Windows. I can just run Linux right inside 
uh, the Windows operating system. Again, not ideal. I can't take uh, 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 all the raw power that Linux has, has to offer. But the advantage is, is now I can run Linux on my time, right? If I do get some downtime and I want to fool around with Linux, then I just, bam, I just fire up the virtual box. Uh, all of my data uh, is much, much easier to maintain. And the amount of, I don't want to say stress, just the the release in my uh, psyche as far as feeling like ah okay this is so much more manageable uh, I, as soon as I switched over I immediately felt it so again this isn't a knock on Linux I, I love Linux and I still want to make it a part of my life but it was no longer serving the purpose that it once was now as I said in my uh, last week's video um, I am going to keep my little laptop around that's dedicated for Linux and again that's going to go in the corner I understand it's not minimalism, but I have the space for it. It doesn't take up that much space. And the advantage to that is, uh, again, if I want to play around with Linux, again, on my own, on my own time, uh, when I feel the need, right? In the prior situation, like I was kind of forced to use Linux because all my data was on the Linux operating system. So like I was really kind of forced, like it's like, if I want to get access to my data, I have to use Linux. But again, I'm going to keep all my data off of this machine. It's just going to sit there. And then when I do get time, if I do get time, and if I want to play around with Linux, you know, set up a media server as a hobby, then I have that option. Now, again, in a year from now, I may find that I'm never touching this laptop, and at that point, I may donate it, right? Like, it's, again, I find out that laptop's not serving a purpose. I think it's going to serve me a purpose, so I want to keep it around and just make sure um, before I just immediately donate that laptop. Again, it's a luxury. I, I have the space to keep it around, so that's what I'm planning on doing. So let's bring this into a real-world situation. Let's say you're really into gardening, right? You started gardening like 10 years ago, and then now you have this huge, huge uh, garden with, with tons and tons of plants and flowers. Well, you know, in the beginning, you may have started off small, you may have had a lot of time, and then now you may find that maybe you don't enjoy doing it as much, right? Maybe it's not serving that same purpose of stress release. Maybe that garden in itself has become stressful because now you feel that you have to maintain this big, beautiful garden that you've built up over the years, right? Maybe you'd rather be doing other things. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's my point of this video is really, really assess anything emotionally or physically that is or is not serving the purpose that it once, what, what you once thought it was supposed to serve as, right? So in this garden situation, like let's say, let's say for example, you want to start downsizing it. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't feel guilty about doing that. Um, you know, and again, maybe you love this big luscious garden and you have the time, then great, keep doing it. But my point is, evaluate yourself and find out if you truly are happy. Is it really stressing you out or, or not? So in the garden situation, you've got a couple of options, right? Uh, if it is stressing you out and you want to downsize, you could get rid of it completely or you could look at other solutions. And again, that's what I've done with my, my operating system dilemma, right? Like I looked at other solutions and I think I found a solution that works for me where I can still access it, but it's not as demanding and not as stressful. So in the garden situation, what could you do? Well, you could do uh, a number of things, right? You could uh, replant all low maintenance plants, right? Maybe the plants you have right now, you have to tend to once a day. Maybe you could find plants that you only have to tend to every six months. That way you can do it more on your time or when you get a chance. So you're not completely cutting out gardening out of your life. You're just making it more on your time. So you can still do the hobby that you like, but maybe you can pursue other interests that you have. Another option is like, let's say, you know, the garden is like one acre big. Maybe you shrink it to down to a tenth of an acre, right? So you just reduced the amount of time it takes to maintain your garden like tenfold, right? And again, if, if it is serving you a purpose, then fine, go at it. That's, that's the whole point of this video. If it's not, then look at solutions on how you can change. Remember, you can make the changes. You can change uh, things very, very easily. It's hard. You're going to have to put in the work. But if you really want the change, do it, right? There's nothing stopping you. Just do it. So anyway, the entire point of this video is make changes if you want to. Um, and really evaluate and be self-aware of things emotionally and physically that are or are not serving purposes. And the things that are not serving purposes, look of ways to reduce them, either getting rid of them or uh, coming up with solutions to make them a lot less maintenance involved. 
Anyway, uh, that's it for me. Hopefully you found this video inspirational um, and hopefully it wasn't too geeky for you. But uh, yeah, in any event, thanks for watching and be sure to catch me next time.